What is happening guys? Welcome back to another day in the shop working on the Suzuki Carry. If you missed the last couple of videos, we got this suspension dialed in. This thing drives so much better, rides through the field so much better, even with a plow on, I can cruise through the field. And it soaks up the bumps really good with those progressive springs up front. So very stoked about all the suspension upgrades. What I want to do today is a little bit of lighting upgrades. So I got a set of LED headlights for the front and then just a set of new lenses for the back. I do know they make LED taillights for these, but they're like 150 bucks. They are stupid expensive. I wasn't about to spend that much on just a set of taillights. So let's open this stuff up. One thing I want to say is we did get like two inches of snow. I was out messing around a little bit and not really enough to start plowing just because I do like to let the snow kind of pack into my driveway because it's gravel so that I'm not just shoving all the gravel off when I plow the snow. So I like to let the first kind of snowfall pack into the driveway, create kind of a barrier between the gravel and the snow, and then I'll get out and plow. But I was messing around a little bit just to try it out, and I found the first weak link. So both of these shoes or guides or whatever you call them that run on the bottom of the plow right there, those both fell off the absolute first push. I went and pushed some snow into a bank and I came back, noticed those are missing. I went back to that one bank and they were sitting there on either side. So I just had like this style clip holding them in there. And obviously that didn't work. So they must have rotated and popped out that way. Um, they do make clips like that that kind of wrap around. Obviously this one's way too big. I'm gonna go to the store, see if I can find any smaller ones that fit like that. That way it's not able to pop out. If I can't find any that fit, I might just stick a bolt through that hole. You can see it's a pretty small hole. So I might just stick a bolt through it just to keep these on and in place, but I kinda want a quick disconnect little clip. So we gotta figure that out. Um, here are the headlights and taillights. So these are just the covers, like I said. These are gonna look a lot better. These ones are all busted up. One's got a hole in it and they're just faded and don't look that great. So we're gonna get those on. Let's open up these headlights and check these puppies out. All right, there's the headlights. So these are just the uh, standard, actually the same as some of the Toyotas, just the standard, what, seven by six or something rectangle lights. Um, high low beam these ones actually have a blinker and a marker light so that's why I didn't put I know I had a lot of questions on why I didn't put any blinkers in the bumper that is why they're gonna be in the headlights and it's just gonna be a cleaner simpler setup so you can actually see one of the plugs right there so what we're gonna have to do is cut that plug off take the hot wire out of that run that up through that grommet that we use to go into the cab for, I believe, the switch for the winch. We'll go through that grommet, come up behind here inside the cab, drill a little hole through the little back cover, get that wire back in there for the blinker, and then this is a side marker light, so I'm just gonna take and piggyback that right into the headlight. So it should be pretty easy. So I'll start with the front, let's get these ripped out. Pretty easy, pull the bezel off, headlight comes right out. Looking at this, these bezels don't look that great, so I may splash a little bit of paint on those, but let's get to work. I'm gonna actually pull the plow off too, just to get a little more room in there. I got it plugged in and it's not working. Not sure what's going on here. Well, like I thought, this is a little bit different, like kind of like the Toyotas, you have to run a relay harness because it has a switching ground wire that activates between high and low beam. So I can get one to work, but as soon as you switch it, say if I wire it to get the high beam to work, if I turn the high beams off, the headlight will turn off. So I'm gonna order up the harness, 
Kind of sucks we can't get it done right now, but we will, I guess, we could paint the uh, bezels there, get the rear taillights on, and also, what I was kind of looking at back here, I know I should have done this when I had the, or when I was building the bumper, but that gap right there kind of bugs me, so I might take some steel and just do a little bend, bolt it right through the top of the bumper, just to cover up that, cover up the wiring and the tire, all that, and I think it'll look a lot better. All right guys, we got these pieces in the oven preheating, so I got that main piece. And then I also built another piece for, I'll show you the gap here. So that small piece I built is just gonna cover this. This is the where the factory reverse light went. These are now my reverse lights, so we're not gonna need that. I'm gonna block that off as well. So I wanna talk real quick about powder coating. I know you guys see me powder coat just about everything I possibly can, or at least everything that I can fit in my smaller oven here. So I wanna bring up a few points, the first being time. Powder coating, as soon as the part cools off, it is cured. It's unlike paint where, as in paint has reducers and everything inside the paint that need to evaporate out of the paint as it cures. Powder just cures in the oven for the 12 minutes or 14 minutes or however long your specific powder takes to cure in the oven. As soon as you pull it out of the oven and let it cool down, the part is 100% cured and you can put it straight to use. You don't have to worry about it being weak or wet or anything, it is completely cured. So that in itself is a big time saver. The prep work is not much different than paint. Obviously you have to have a sandblaster to sandblast the stuff. It's not absolutely necessary. I've done powder coating without sandblasting before. It works okay. Sandblasting just gives it that extra step, the extra grip for the powder coat to really grip into the part. A nice sandblasted finish really helps that out. Another thing I wanna talk about is cost. 
It is a little bit more expensive to get started. You're gonna need an oven, an air compressor, a sandblaster, the powder coating gun. But once you have all that, the powder is dirt cheap, so it does save some money once you're set up and have everything. The last thing I wanna say is the durability of powder coat. In my opinion, powder coat is one of the strongest coatings out there. Cerakote is very strong. They, there is some very strong paints and bed liners, that kind of stuff. But powder coat, in my opinion, is one of the strongest coatings. So like always, go check out prismaticpowders.com for all your powder coating stuff. We are doing something a little bit different on this one. Since it's going on the bumper, I kind of wanted it to halfway match the bumper at least. So this powder coat is called Splatter Black and it's kind of a textured coating like that Raptor liner. So should look really good on there. That's enough talking. Let's get these parts coated. We got these two plates in the main one here and then this one up here that was where the original reverse lights went but we're using these now so that's why we blocked that off looking so much better without that gap there well we finally got our harness in this is a uh, pretty simple so you just plug this into one of the factory plugs and then you got each and for each headlight a ground off each side and then one to the battery. So let's get these headlights pulled back out. Let's just temporarily throw that harness in, make sure they function like they should. And then what I'll probably do is the wiring, all the wiring for the headlights coming through the cab. I'm gonna pull all that out, do all my connections inside the cab, and then just run the new wires for just the headlights in, just to keep all the mess out from behind these headlights. So let's get to work and see if we can get these new lights to work. All right guys, the new harness fixed the uh, kind of the high low issue I was having. So everything's working like it should. I'm gonna have to extend the positive and I'll probably mount the relays up underneath the dash and just keep everything there and just run the positive back to the battery. And that should work pretty good. So you can see here, the wiring comes through this big grommet. So I'm going to probably take this all this tape off pull the headlight harness through out into the cab and then like i said just pull these leads out for the new the new leads for the headlights just pull those through
right guys, we got this thing wired up, got the headlights in. So you saw I just tapped into the marker light. I do have to get that plug in out of here, but the marker light that's on the side here, I tapped in for the headlight. And then the blinkers that were originally in the bumper, um, I just took that wire, extended it up through the grommet up here. And then, like I said, I just made, uh, just ran this hot wire all the way back down to the battery. So we are good to go. Let's fire these lights up and see what they do. There we go, everything's working. So that's the blinker. We'll turn that off, get the headlights on. There's the low and the high. So these things should work pretty good. We're gonna have to wait till it gets dark out and we'll get outside, align them, and see how bright they are. In the meantime, we still I still haven't painted those bezels. So let's get those painted. Once those dry up, we'll throw them on. Other than that, we are good to go for wiring. we got the bezels back on and painted looking much much better i must say and it is dark outside so let's bring the truck out let's try these lights out and we'll probably have to do a little bit of aiming we can still get to the adjusters with the bezels on so let's go aim them and see how bright they are see how they work All right, we got these headlights adjusted. So I'm actually very, very happy with these. I didn't know they actually had a cutoff just like a projector does. That looks really, really good for a set of these LED lights. I've had a few of these on my older trucks before I put the front end on the red truck too, and none of them looked this good. Let's hit the high beams. There we go. So you can see, pretty bright. Let's go out in the field and see how they work. So there's highs and lows there. Kind of a little bumpy out here, but you get the point. These things are really actually pretty freaking bright. Well, that's it. Headlights are working amazing. Like I said, I'm honestly very, very impressed with these. I've never had a set of these LED, like the rectangle LED headlights have a cutoff. A lot of them are just like a halogen light and they just kind of spread light all over the place. 
These ones are almost like a projector. They actually have a crisp cutoff line. So super nice, they're very bright. And at least on this truck and on like the Toyotas and some of the early Tacomas, you do need that relay harness to make everything work. So once you get that harness in, everything works like it should. Like always, the lights and everything else I used in the video will be linked down in the description box. So go check that out. Really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go smash that thumbs up button. We'll see you in the next one.